You're probably wondering why one of my eyes is blue. Um, I had contacts in earlier, but it was like messing with my eye, and so my eye got really bloodshot, which it might still be now, I'm not sure. Um, and so they said it was disturbing, so I decided to put an eye patch on it. Disgusting! <laughs> right? Well, it was one of you. All right. Uh, I believe we're on the last page of the homework. Here it was. Number nine is the same as a different problem in the homework, so I'm not going to show you that. We, yeah, I figured we did. Did we do 10 and 11 together or no? <coughs> Wonderful. Then I did something consistent last Friday. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw an auxiliary line right here. Hello. Did you unjam your locker? What kind of jam was it? Was it strawberry? It's peach. Gotcha. No one dared to give you the raspberries, huh? That's All right. Spaceballs, anyone? Mel Brooks? Dear God. We drift further and further from God every day. It's fantastic. I watch it every year for my birthday. Tradition. All right, so the reason I did this. Um, is so that we can divide this up into two different areas, uh, two different, uh, two different uh, top and bottom uh, intersections, right? So if I ignore the bottom here and I extend out that guy, check it out. This is a much easier problem. And I know that this angle right here, which is part of what x is, is going to be the same as this angle right here because corresponding angles, right? And Cap says that corresponding angles will be congruent if the lines are parallel, which they is. Now, what do I know about this angle right here? What's its measure going to be and why? It's going to be 62. Why is it 62? Vertical By vertical angle theorem. Right. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Going for the assist, okay. So you set it and she spiked it. That's what happened there. Volleyball terminology. Oh, you're not a volleyballer. You're a swimmer. You're a swammer. Got we, we never had a pool at the high school, and so what we'd do is for cross country to mess with freshmen, we'd always say swim team, meet at the pool, swim team, meet at the pool. And really what it was is cross country was our swim team. But they didn't figure that out. They thought like there had to be a pool somewhere in the school, right? Which I thought was hilarious. All right, so that's 62, which means this is 62. So part of x we have down. Now the other bit of x is this bit right here, right? And if we were to add those together, we're going to get all of x. So we need to figure out what that bit is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this in half again and just look at the bottom portion. And when I do so, you'll notice this, that that angle right there is 144. Now, that's not very useful because when I pull this up, like that tells me all of that's 144. And like, I don't know. That's just not very helpful. I guess I could subtract 62, figure out what this is, you know, but whatever. What really is helpful is that if this is 144, then this is 144 by vertical angles, right? And if that's 144, what do I know about the purple and the green? What's the relationship? The purple and the green angles? They're a linear pair, by definition. And then by linear pair theorem, it says if they're a linear pair, which they is, uh, then they should be supplementary, right? And supplementary means they add up to what? All right, so all of this should add up to 180. So what's 180 minus 144? Better question, what's 180 minus 140? 40. Now subtract four more. 36, very good. So that's 36, which means x altogether is going to be 36 and 62 added together, angle addition postulate. So it's going to be 98 degrees, which is a boy band from the 90s, which we talked about. All right, they did the ending song for the credits for Mulan. Mulan is great. I don't think I've ever watched that. Underrated Disney film. Uh, very underrated Disney film. Yeah, definitely. We should definitely watch Mulan. Mm, yeah, great idea. Yeah. Hercules is great. Okay? The genius of taking Greek gods and combining it with gospel music is just brilliant. Alan Menken, blowing my mind. I cry every time and I will go the distance. I will go the distance. Okay? Let me tell, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Okay? 
I had a friend in high school, okay? Shout out to this guy. I'm telling your story. I hope you don't mind, okay? Um, I had a friend in high school. His name was Nick. Uh, Nick was in the uh, uh, marching band with me, which I was a member of for four years, Renegade Regiment, rock on, right? Uh, very big deal. We toured all over the place, all over Canada, and we kicked bands sizes that were way bigger than us, okay? We had a school of about 300 kids, 300, 400 kids. 80 to 90 of those kids were in this marching band voluntarily, right? I mean, we just kicked ass, right? And so we would go to schools that were five times as big, of a, big as us and had like over 200 kids in the band. We just destroy them, right? Absolutely destroy them because we all bought into the system. Anyway, Nick was a senior when I was a freshman. So Nick was part of the color guard, right? And Nick, at the time, back in the early 2000s, uh, this was something that was like very strange for small town America, right? We didn't understand this stuff and small town America still struggles with this. But Nick was gay, right? And so Nick would have this song play when he would do his rifle moves and do all this stuff and he'd figure this stuff out and he would play, I Will Go the Distance, right? To find somewhere where I belong. And it broke my heart because in small town America, he did not belong because we did not accept him. But he was accepted within that band. Changed my life. Fantastic song. I cannot listen to that song without thinking of him. Shout out to Nick. Eleven. So, here's the diagram without the stupid fence posts in the way, right? That's 50. This is Y. So I know that these are both the same by vertical angles, yeah? I don't know. That's something. What do I know about angle Y? It's corresponding to this angle. So what does it tell me about y and 50? What's the relationship? They're a linear pair. So they're going to be supplementary. So y plus 50 equals 180. Subtract 50 from both sides. y is 130. I like them apples. Now, since you all did this over the weekend because it was for homework, I don't feel bad for going through it very quickly because most of you guys had stuff written down, right? Moving on. All right. Um, oh, man, it doesn't go all the way. I'll have to fix that later. Oh, right, yeah. Here's what we're going to do today. Triangles. Why do they call them triangles? Because they have three angles, you dingus. Thanks for the setup, right? Set and spike. There you go. We're not going to get into this yet. We're going to do a warm up first. So get your warm up sheet if you haven't got one already. Uh, get your row warm up sheet if you're the column, I suppose. Make sure you fill, uh, finish that entire packet. It is due officially Friday. Just like any homework. I don't know. Sorry, I have no guess for that. Are you chewing Big Red? Oh, if you ain't chewing Big Red. What? Oh, just extra? I feel like that fits your personality a little bit more. Just kidding. You're not extra, Jenna. That's right. Don't steal from that Kroger. Kroger and Sterling's amazing. The guy who, the one old guy that works the bags. Don't steal from Kroger. Steal from some other big corporation. Kroger does an okay job as far as corporations go. Hate when that happens. I just can't stop. Ow, right. Don't steal from Kroger. Steal from other places, okay? Especially the, the nice guy that works there. He's the most wonderful human being. You know what I'm talking about, right? Here's your warm up. I think the song of the day kind of fits it. Which is why I chose it. I also heard we didn't listen to it. Somebody said we don't listen to pop music in here. So guess what? We've done zero pop songs. Now we're going to do one, which now we've done too many. I like country. Fair enough. No. You want to listen to 
in the country. We will. Okay. Just probably not the country you like, because none of the songs I play in here are songs that you know, and I do that on purpose. Wait, right? I want to do. I want to play good country. Good country. Where's Where my country gone? Pearl Haggard's dope. Yeah. Here you go. Make a graph. On the, on the back. On the back. It says page three at the bottom. It does? Oh my god. All right. Cheyenne's birthday. I know. Happy birthday, Cheyenne. Woo! Woo! Bailey sucks. All right. All right. So. Here it is. It's not Friday. Guys, meme of Derek every day. Have you not subscribed to that? Not to follow that on Instagram? Who is it? Top notch. Who is running it? A mystery. Maybe it's me. Here you go. Uh, make sure you make it x-axis, y-axis, x-axis should be time. That is the independent variable. Y-axis is going to be size of hand. There are multiple ways to answer this question, right, of what the graph would look like. Think creatively. You can come up with multiple ways. Great for you. Here it is. Oh, we need to mute it. We don't want to hear the kids talking. Song of the day is this. The Scientist by Coldplay. It fits the theme, I think. Ouch. Here you go.
go. That's their graph. It's kind of a little like stair step thing. That's actually a math term, stair step, stair step. Uh, we also call this piecewise because that's broken up to pieces. Um, so the idea is that at zero seconds, the way they decided to interpret it, which you might have done differently, right? I would have done differently, to be honest, uh, is that for the first three seconds, everyone has less than one card, meaning that person A might have one, person B might have one, right? But they don't all have one yet, so they call that a zero, right? And then at three seconds, everybody has one card, and he's starting to deal for the second time around, right? After three more seconds, everybody has two cards, so they call it two, right? And we have three more seconds of everybody having two cards at least, right? And then we have three cards at least, and then we have four cards at least, and so on and so forth. Now, the way I would have interpreted it, a couple ways, I'm gonna show you the way I did it, I think it's pretty clever. Um, but one of the ways you could have is to say, look, right at the get-go, we have one card, right? And you'd start the line here. And then we'd all jump up to two, and then we'd all jump up to three, right? We'd just raise everything one level. Did anybody else do it differently? How did you do it? Okay. Got some dots. Sure. Yeah, that works. So the way Natalie thought of it was like this. She said, well, after three seconds, everybody has one. After six seconds, everybody has two. After nine seconds, everybody has three. And that's valid, right? Um, as time goes on, they still have three. So that's what they did, is they said, look, even as time goes on, we still have three, right? But her idea maybe was to follow just one person, right? He has three, he has two, he has, uh, uh, he has one, he has two, he has three. Numbers are hard, right? Um, but again, I think a strong argument can be made for these straight lines here. Remember, they represent that time is still going on and that person still has one during that time period. It's not that during that time period they just fell off the face of the earth and they no longer exist, right? At four seconds, they should still have some amount of cards, right? Not just absolutely nothing, but still a valid way of looking at it. Um, here's the way I did it. Let's see if you can interpret it. Let's get rid of this mumbo jumbo. Go away now. Thank you. Uh, the abyss. Hello, darkness. Oh, this graph. That's my answer. Yes. By the last card. By the last card that they were dealt. By the last card that they were dealt. Oh, gotcha. So I just waited till the end. Well, if I waited the end, I wouldn't have started it here, though, right? Because that's the beginning of time. I would have like jumped along there. It's not a bad idea. You are noticing that it's constant. So at the end, it would make sense because then everybody has the same amount, and that's where it's at. So you're right. It is constant. Hand size does not change. Why is this a valid way of looking at it? Come on, think outside the box. Quinn. I mean, that's what it looks like, right? But why is that valid? Because obviously everyone doesn't have the same amount the entire time, right? No idea? Macy? You don't give cards out? Maybe that's one way of doing it, right? Hand size zero. But that's not what happened, right? I'm telling you that this is a graph that represents what we just watched. Time versus hand size. Their hands didn't change. They were the same the whole time. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is hilarious. Right? What's the hand size versus time? Well, my hands are staying the same as ideal, right? They don't change. Shut up! It was funny. What's wrong with you? You're all idiots. Thank you for changing your mind, Marissa. Marissa, I like your hair. I don't know why I do. I mean, like, let's be honest, but like, I do like it. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I have to be careful, like, when I say, like, hey, I like your dress. The number one response, you know what it is, not thank you, it's, it's a skirt! I'm like, oh, God, right? Well, I can't say, it. I can't say it's not It's a wig, or I don't know, like, well, it's not a wig. or I hate my hair, or, or something like that. Awesome, great, I'm glad you don't hate your hair. You're her. All right, let's take a look at this thing. 
Triangles. Diana, why do they call them triangles? There's three angles. We're learning. Not three sides. Yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. You got a lot going on. That's good. You got volume, okay? I'd kill to have that kind of volume. You know what my hair does when it's long? It sits like this, like a grandma's hair, right? It's awful. Also, when I had long hair for the longest time, I thought, like, conditioner gets you ready for shampoo. So, like, you put the conditioner in first. I know! Complete disaster, right? I was doing it for St. Baldrick's, trying to get kids excited to raise money for this kid in our school who had leukemia, right? And there I am, looking at my stupid hair, and I'm like, I'm doing it for the kids, I'm doing it for the kids. And then I figured it out at the end, like, right before I shaved it off. Or I didn't actually get to shave it off. Sad story. Uh, we never got to do that, or raise that money for that kid. Uh, but uh, not my fault. Oh, uh, yeah, kid's probably dead. I don't know. Um, I know! I blame my old school. You guys are horrible people. Um, anyway, I uh, figured it out right at the end, and I had like that nice volume. I had sick flow, but it was like right at the end before I cut it. So it took me forever to figure that out. Why don't they tell you on the bottle, conditioner comes after shampoo? Right? Well, because they're two separate bottles, and they, they're like, I don't know. Yeah, see, the, see, see, look at this. Look at this. I'm not an idiot. Okay? Jenna knows. And look at Jenna's hair. She got major flow. Yep, see, she just did the hair flip thing. Yeah, major flow. So she knows what she's talking about, okay? None of you got flow except for Mark. Mark has flow. Mark has major flow, okay? Mark could be a hockey player. Like, you've got it. You've got it, okay? Wow, like a Pentecostal person or something. All right. Do Pentecostals have long hair? I don't know. Is that a thing? Uh, that's also true. All right, let's just label these angles because it's kind of ambiguous where they are. How do you solve a problem like Maria? Guys, that movie is about Nazis. I didn't realize that until I was much older. Well, like, I don't know. My grandma showed me it at a young age, and I think, like, subliminally, that's where I get my hatred from Nazis from. Shout out to you, Grandma. Um, punch them whenever you get the chance. Uh, sound of Music, right? And it's a, true, it's a true story, right? Like, you watch it as a kid, and you're like, doe, a deer, a female deer, and you're having a great time, right? It's all great. I know all the songs. And then at the end, you notice that the admiral finds this Nazi flag, like, sitting outside his house that someone put up, and he tears it, right? Because he's like, screw you, Nazi scum, right? And then the girl's in love with the kid who joins the Nazis, right? And so they're, they're stuck in between, right? Because the idea is that Austria is being occupied by Nazis, right? It's not really invaded, but like they're being taken over politically, right? And so they're switching out this old garden. So what they do is a form of defiance at the end is when they have this concert with their kids, they sing Edelweiss, which is a Austrian national song. And it's their kind of defiance to the Nazis, like sticking it to them, right? Which is why they have to run away to the Alps and, uh, you know, flee the Nazis. Uh, I know, it's beautiful, right? Which is why we should oppose fascism at all steps, guys. Okay? All right. He's a Nazi. You can't fix him, honey. You can't fix him. Okay? He did, but he chose not to. He turned him in. He blew the whistle. Yeah, he blew the whistle on him. I know. That's good advice. Seriously, it's just like it's just like free punching practice. Like it, no one will blame you. Okay. I'm not sure where this is going now. All right, so if we're not talking about Nazis, I don't want to talk about. It. Okay, we're talking about math instead. So how do you solve a problem like Maria? Maria, Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. West Side Story, tying it all together. Major seventh. I love that. Right, it goes to the. Uh, it goes from do to t, right? Maria, right? And then eventually gets up to do, right? Beautiful, beautiful. West Side Story is dope. Bernstein, man, what a god! How do you solve a problem like Maria? It's a reference to the movie. Yeah. Uh, for all line Maria, she's the main character played by Julie Andrews, and uh, she's still alive. 
Um, uh, she's the main character in Sound of Music. But the end is Alps. Yep, they do run away to the Alps. And America comes in and kicks some Nazi ass, right? Yeah, how can we solve for X, Landry? Okay, so Landry's noticing, first of all, right? If we were to figure out a relationship between the blue and the red, even if it was a true relationship, it wouldn't be very helpful because we have two variables, right? So we'd be stuck. So the question is really, right? It boils down to, what is the relationship between the purple and the blue? Are they congruent? Are they supplementary? Do they both equal seven? Like, what, what's going on here, right? And if we figure that out, then we've got x and x together. We get our x's together. Terrible idea in real life. Great idea in math. And we solve for x, and that's what we want to do, right? So the question is, how do these two relate? Now, question. Are they congruent? They don't look like they are, but they could be, right? We need to be able to prove with this diagram that they are congruent or supplementary, or whatever they are, right? So here's what I would do. What I would do is I would extend these out. Because right now, all I see is a triangle. But if I extend these out, now I might start seeing that we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, don't we? Yeah. Which is what we've been doing this whole time. Right? So when we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal corresponding angles postulate, tells us that the corresponding angles will be what? Nope. The corresponding angles will be congruent, right? So we know that this purple angle and this red angle are congruent because they're corresponding. Now, again, is that a helpful thing? No, it's true, but it's not helpful because we have x and y, so darn, right? But we do know by vertical angles that this blue angle here is the same as this blue angle here. That's by vertical, right? So what does that tell us about the relationship between the blue and the purple? What does that tell us about the relationship of the blue and the purple? Go ahead and say it, Ellie. Yeah. They're a linear pair. Now, could we have done that without doing any of that? Yeah, they're both on a line. They're a linear pair. But I think it's more obvious when we do it this way, right? OK. So they're a linear pair, which by linear pair theory says that they should be supplementary. And by definition of supplementary, what's the definition of supplementary? They add up to 180, right? So we know that 6x minus 14 plus uh, whoops, 3x plus 5 is going to equal 180. Terrible idea in real life, great idea in math, we're going to get our x's together. I got 6x and 3x on the same side. How many x's is that total? Nine. 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 All right. Negative 14 plus 5. It used to be my favorite, too. Negative 14 plus 5 is negative 9. Now we have some options. Remember, PEMDAS is a lie. Could you add 9 to both sides and then divide by 9? Sure. We can also do it in reverse. I'm going to divide because when I get the chance to divide and it works out nicely, it makes my number smaller, which is what I like. I like small numbers, right? So when we divide by 9, remember division is divorce. and divorce, everything gets divided up. So when I divide by 9, I divide this guy and I get x. What's a negative 9 divided by 9? Negative 1 equals, don't lose your equal sign, 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 180 divided by 9 will be? 20, right? 10 times that. Now I add. And I get 21. So x is 21. Let's go back and plug that in and figure out some information about this problem. I'm going to plug it into the purple. What's 3 times 21? 63, right? 3 times 20 is 60. 3 times 1 is 3. 63. Add 5 to that. 68. How do we solve for y? How do we solve for y? Quinn. How do we know y plus 8 equals 68, Quinn? Yeah, so check it out. The red and the purple are corresponding. They're both top right corners. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, which means the corresponding angles will be congruent. So we know that y plus 8 is going to equal 68. Do some simple algebra, and we get y equals 60.
I don't care about you writing this stuff down. You're never going to look at it again anyway. Am I going to grade it? Yeah, sure, maybe. Right? It's like whose line? Everything's made up and the points don't matter. So why are we doing this if I'm not going to grade it? To learn. So if you aren't watching the show and you have no idea why you're writing this stuff down and why that y plus 8 equals 68, you're not actually learning. Stop wasting your ink. Stop wasting my time. Stop wasting your time. Okay? Raise your hand if you've been in here after school or before school to get help from me. Raise your hand. I have one. Raise your hand if you have. Good. Now, out of the people that have raised their hands, who learned a whole lot in very little time? Keep your hands up. Every single one of you. So, put them down. What's the magic? Is it just like before and after school you guys are just more awake? Maybe, right? That's part of it. Uh, you guys are fourth hour though, so really that's not a very good excuse. You guys should be awake by now, right? First hour, second hour, third, eh, okay. Right? Okay, you're still tired, but for the most part, there's not a huge difference between now and after school. There's a little bit, right? I think the major difference is, is when you're in here after school getting help, I'm not making it for a grade, right? And so you don't write stuff down. What you do is you watch the entire time. You watch the show and you learn. Now let's pretend it's after school and this isn't for a grade, as if it isn't. Or a, hey, here's where you made your mistakes and here's what you did great. That's way more useful, right? Now I have to do grades, but in general they don't matter. So I make it really easy for you to get good grades, okay? Jenna, yes you may. So, for number two, don't write anything down. Watch the show. Try it. How do we solve a problem like Maria? First of all, I'm going to extend my parallel lines because that'll allow me to stop looking at this as a trapezoid and start looking at it as a problem that we've seen before. I have two parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Here's the transversal. Do you see it now? If we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, that means the corresponding angles will be what? Congruent, the same thing, right? So corresponding angles are congruent. So first of all, this angle I know is 90. They give us that. This corresponds with what angle? What angle? They'll be the same thing, but don't jump ahead. These correspond, right? Because they're both top left corners of their intersections. And they will be congruent because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. When those are parallel, those will be congruent. So if that's 90, we know 5x is also 90. Don't write this down. So now we know 5x equals 90. How many times does 5 go into 100? 20. So how many will it go into 19? 18. Or not 19. How many times will it go into 90? 18 times, right? Two less than what it would go into for 100. OK? So x is 18. Now, what do we know about 9y and 5x? Look at it. They're a linear pair, two angles forming a line, which means by linear pair theorem, they're supplementary. What does it mean to be supplementary? They add up to 180. So 90 plus 9y should equal 180. Thank you for telling me, Calvin. So that is a true statement. It is helpful because it only has one variable. So we can solve. Subtract 90 from both sides. We get 9y equals 90. And then we divide by 9 and we get y equals 10. You didn't write it down, right? Some of you guys are doing it anyway. Now write it down. Do you understand how I got what I got? That's the whole freaking point. That's why we do what we do. That's why I'm here. I don't care about what you write down. It's for you. 
But more importantly, I want you to learn it. And I feel like you could learn a lot better if you didn't write it down, because that seems to be the difference between now and after school. So try it. I'll give you time to write it down. Because guess what? Now that you're watching the show, I can go faster, and then we have time to pause for station identification afterwards. Right? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm calling this week. I am. Okay. Nope, I will. No, that's not what I said. No. We're going go on a road trip. I'll get some snacks. What kind of snacks do you like for road trips? What kind of snacks do you like? Whales. Whales? Whales are dope. Sprinkles are not a snack, but like, that's adorable. What do you like to eat? I like eating sprinkles. Okay. Sprinkles also suck. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna get this done. What's wrong with that? Raw XD, right? That's C. That's not what I was referencing. But okay. I don't think seeing kids like to be called furries. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a different genre of child. Went to the bathroom, just threw in some conditioner. All right. Number three, how do we solve a problem like Maria? Bailey, walk us through what you would do. Nobody write anything down. Everyone pause. Diana has to get her folder. All right, probably a good first step is to extend these guys. All right, so notice, let's do one transversal at a time. If I cover this up, don't I have two parallel lines being intersected by a transversal? Ta-da, we know how to solve these kind of problems. All right, let's label our angles with color. 6x is going to be red. Let's have uh, 8x plus 40 be purple. All right, you're not writing this down, right? Perfect, wonderful, excellent. I know, you're ingrained to do this, but like you don't learn that way, so like, why? Yep, I get it. Hard to remember. What do you see? Doesn't have to be useful, just tell me something. Landry, what do you see? They both have X's, that's good. So if we find a relationship between those two, then we can solve for X, right? They're both on a line, but are they a linear pair? No, no not, as, not as they look right now, right? Bailey. Um, six, you can put 6x above the 8x plus 40. Why can I do that? Because they're corresponding angles. And by cap, we know that if the lines are parallel, then they should be the same thing, right? Top right corner, top right corner. How do you feel? So now what do we know about these two angles? They are a what? Linear pair, which means they're supplementary by linear pair theory. So 6x plus 8x plus 40 is going to equal 180. Life is not about what you do. It's what? Who you do it with. Work together. Figure out x and y on your own. Algebra hard, geometry easy. Which we got up before. Okay? Lots of mistakes to make in algebra here. Okay? Partner up. Partner. Yeehaw. The reason I like you guys working in partners is because you can explain stuff to each other, which is good for your education. If you don't have a partner, I will come around and be your partner, and you'll hate that.
Also, am I returning this on my own, or is someone going to claim this? Yeah, it was in that desk, and I realized the like, first hour after I offered to return it that it says, this book belongs to Miss Palmer's classroom library, which I'm embarrassed for her for owning this. Should I remove the patch and just keep the patch on? Remove it. Keep it on. We have two Carolines being infected by a transverse type, which tells us that the corresponding answer should be converted. It seems like everybody has the first half of number three done and done correctly. X is 10, do we agree? Yes. Wonderful. So figure out Y is on your own. Number four is for homework. Mucho cuidado, por favor. Be very careful. Remember, let's focus on the variables that are the same. Your question is really this angle right here and this angle right here, how are they related? Because if you can figure out how they're related, then you can solve for Y, right? That's angle X, and this is angle Z. I'll see you tomorrow. I can check it. I put context in this morning and I scratched my eye, which happens occasionally.
Are we still bloodshot? I believe so, yes. Off the top of my head, yeah. Do you have Ivy this class period? Who? Ivy? I do, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, they said it looked weird with one of my eyes closed all the time, so I... <laughs> do I still have a bloodshot eye? Um, oh, yeah. Okay, I figured by six hours. Oh, okay. Like Probably. Yeah. And I will yeah, remove I my eye patch. I started out with hard drive. Sure, right. Uh, I really should just get LASIK. I hear you. You were talking to him. He was really tall. He was really tall. That guy in the hallway. Oh, yeah. I'm really jealous. Yeah, he's pretty like... Well, not yet, technically, but...